self out on a uh, consumer profile. Um, but I will go through all of the different steps in doing social media. Um, I have actually posted in the chat bar, uh, if y'all click on chats, a link to a Google Drive. And I have downloaded uh, five Easter images for y'all. So if uh, you wanted to borrow one of those for an Easter post, you, you can do that. That's an extra bonus uh, for y'all today for attending the class. Uh, but there's some really cute images in there. Um, so when we get to the social media uh, posting to your business page, if you wanted to use one of those, uh, you can. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And you're going to get directly into command. So coming into command, we are going to start at designs. Uh, which is close to the bottom of the applets on your left-hand side. And let's go create some designs so we can post them out on social media. So to create a, a design, the first one I want to show you is a social uh, post. So we want to come down here to the right-hand corner uh, where the blue circle uh, is with a plus sign and click on that. Then that is going to let us uh, choose what kind of design we want to create. Um, we are going to create social first today. So we're going to go ahead and click on the social campaign and click next. And for those of you all that kind of uh, attended this class with me uh, before, I've gone through it pretty fast in the past uh, just to kind of show you the basics. Uh, but we're going to slow down today. We're going to uh, do this together. We're going to actually create the, the social media post so that it's ready for all of us uh, when we get to the campaigns portion that we can all send it out. So um, if you are following along and want to do this with me, I'm going to uh, verbally talk you all through it too. Um, and you can kind of toggle back and, back and forth between watching my screen um, and actually creating it yourself. Um, so the first one I'm going to uh, want to create today um, is going to be a uh, neighborhood social post. Um, so I'm going to come down here and under this pivot, shift ahead, I'm going to click on that. And there's uh, going to be five, uh, six different uh, posts here. Uh, they are Instagram posts, so if you um, have an Instagram, you can uh, post this out on Instagram. Um, if you don't have a Instagram account, uh, maybe you want to go over to um, listings and down to neighborhood snapshots. And we can come over and do a Facebook. I think everybody's got, got a Facebook page. Um, so let's maybe do one of those uh, instead, because I don't know that anybody or everybody on the call uh, does Instagram. So let's uh, pick one of your favorites uh, here in the neighborhood snaps. Um, I think I'm going to do this very first one. So we're going to go, I'm going to click uh, use in the upper right hand corner of this thumbnail. And that is going to bring up the template. Uh, the Facebook template for this neighborhood. So as you can uh, see, it, it's brought it up. It's got a nice aerial shot of the uh, of a neighborhood. Um, and then it's got a couple different uh, areas to the actual template. Uh, the first thing that I always change is my logo. Uh, it's just kind of what I do. Um, so I'm, yep, question? Can we record your uh, presentation? It is recording. This will be recording and posted out on, um, on our Facebook page. Okay, because I tried to record it from my side and they said I need to ask permission from you. Yes, we're, we're recording for everybody to enjoy out on uh, our private social, uh, social Facebook page. Awesome, thank you. So again, uh, going back to logo. Um, so I'm gonna click over here to my logos and I have already downloaded a number of my logos here. Uh, if you don't have these, you can come into your company logo, um, or you can come down here to add library and add them uh, from your computer. Uh, does ev everybody have a 
hopefully everybody has their uh, DBA logos. If you don't speak up, I can put it in, I can put a copy in a chat right quick. Okay. Um, another way you can get that um, is you can come down here to uh, KWDBA logos. Um, oh, it won't. So, uh, I don't have one. Okay, let's let's just do it for everybody. Um, Guys, let me load it right quick. Yeah, I So the second link that I posted, uh, guys, that is our company DBA logo. Um, it is the gray and black one uh, that you see here and that you see right here on my screen. Okay. So you can download that to your computer and upload it uh, right here to your library. You simply click on library. The to uh, top are going to be uh, your logos. Um, all, I've got all four of mine already here, uh, but if yours are empty, it'll look like this. It'll be a white background with a plus sign. You simply click on the plus sign. It'll bring up uh, your computer, and then you can choose uh, whichever logo uh, you want to upload here. Uh, these are icons. They're uh, different than your actual logos. Um, I am actually using the KWs down here. Uh, since I do have a number of different logos, uh, I, I am using the K, uh, simple KWs as I, uh, which is allowed as well. Uh, to click out of this area, it's very, very faint, but you can see a small little gray X right here about where my mouse is. Uh, you just click, uh, click out of that X and it'll bring, it, bring you right back here. Um, so let, let's just work left to right. Um, that makes sense with most people. So I'm going to come down here to the KWLS area because I want to get the neighborhood snapshot uh, for what I want to post. So I'm going to come down here to KWLS and I'm going to uh, come over from listings to snapshot. Christy, how do you get to this page? To, to the icon for to this? Yes. Okay. Um, you you have to actually okay. You go into your designs. Right. Okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna back up just real quick. Uh, looks like we have somebody joining us. So, here's your main designs. We're in the designs applet. Okay. We were gonna choose a new applet. Okay. And you're gonna choose a social media applet. Okay. And next. Okay. Okay. To get to this one that I had open. Thank you. We're waiting on command right now. Working, it's just working really slow. We came over here to listings, down to neighborhood snaps, and we cho I chose this very first one under Facebook. Um, if you want your social posts to go somewhere else, maybe LinkedIn, uh, you can choose a different format, uh, Twitter, 
um, each one of these different uh, social media types are going to be formatted for the platform that they they go on. Uh, most people have fa Facebook, so that's what we're going to do uh, on today's class. So I'm not going to re-download this one. Um, I'm actually going to come out here and just click on Template. Come on. So on your listing, which one you choose? Just listed or for sale? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing whoever's speaking. So this Lawrence, uh, I I was in a listing in your uh, my design template, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of a selection, right? You have for sale, just listed price. Yes, I, I chose one under the neighborhood snap. Oh, neighborhood snaps. Okay. <clears throat> I got you. And then Facebook, right? All right. I'm following. Yes, and then I'm doing a Facebook one. Okay. So uh, now we're in here and we're going to the KWLS. If you are doing a four listed or just sold or something like that, you can come under here under listings and search. Uh, MLS number, KWLS ID, uh, ser search by listing agent or co-listing agent to bring up actually your MLS data. But what we want to do is go to snapshot because uh, we want to change this neighborhood. So if you wanted to do it by a neighborhood name, you can uh, simply type in uh, the na uh, neighborhood that you want, and then it'll bring up a list of neighborhoods that uh, meet that criteria, and you click on the neighborhood that you're uh, looking for. That will bring down all of the neighborhood snaps that you can use for that uh, neighborhood. If you wanted to make this a little bit more general than a specific neighborhood, you could actually come and search by postal code Come up and type a zip code, click search, and it'll bring up the uh, different neighborhood snaps for that zip code. So you can see this one right here matches this on the template. So we're going to click once on the template. That is going to bring in the uh, dotted highlighted area. So this is going to tell the template we want to replace this image and I want to replace it with uh, my area. So I'm going to come over to the left hand side of what I want to replace it with and this center box with the two arrows going in a circle is the replace image icon. So I'm going to click that once and it's automatically going to feed it right here into my template. So now I've created one for the zip code 76210, which is the current Denton market. It has all of the updated uh, real-time data here. So I'm going to, uh, next, I'm going to come over here to the wording, and it's, gonna, it's saying things are heating up in Barton Hills. Once is going to highlight the actual text box. Clicking on it twice will bring your cursor into the text box for you to highlight what you want to change. And we're going to change this to current. Now that's going to say things are heating up in Corinth, Texas. The next thing we're going to change is our logo. So again, if you click on the logo once, there we go. I had to actually click three times uh, for it to highlight and to take, but now it does have the uh, dotted box around the area that I want to change. And I want to come over to my logos area on the left-hand side where I've downloaded my logos. And again, I want to hover over the logo that I want to replace and click the circled arrows, which is the replace logo. And I'm going to Click on that. Now it did drop it down here versus up here. So with my icon having the little kind of X 
across with the arrows, I'm going to click and hold this logo and I'm going to drag it up. Mm -hmm. If you see, if I drag it up here, there's no uh, solid lines. So I'm going to slowly bring it down and you see the line that comes directly through the logo. That line will tell you that you are centered with the other wording. So I'm going to drop, drop it right there, click out of it, and now this has my logo in here. And now I have updated the main information, my wording, and my logo. If I wanted to change this picture, I could. I think it's a pretty neat aerial picture. Um, it's not too, too uh, far from what you could expect in the current market. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. So I am now done creating this image. Now that I am done creating the image, I do want to come up here to the upper right hand side and I want to rename it. So I'm going to highlight this name in the upper right hand corner and I'm going to name it Current Snapshot. 4-9-2020. Yep. Hey, Christy, I have a real quick question. Yes. Um, so if you go back to the ones where it has the map and the average listing price and whatnot like that, um, can you can just substitute that out and then it would, um, or would it change at all if you put in either one of those? Um, if you wanted to put uh, either one of these in here, you can, or are you wanting to put like the map like up here big? Yeah, if you, well, I, I, I don't know. I guess I just, I guess I would have to play with it to yeah. kind of see or whatnot to make your own. Um, hold on one second. So that's the, I mean, okay. but I guess, so, yeah. Yeah, so if you click on the image, which brings up your dotted lines again, uh -huh. and you clicked on maybe this map and hit replace image, it's going to replace uh -oh. that image over here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, because it's so big, um, you might have to play with it a little bit. Um, okay. Don't know that you can shrink the image within the box. Gotcha. Um But if you didn't like this image, um, oh. and unfortunately, guys, some of these icons are still disappearing and reappearing over here on the left-hand side. If you can see uh, images and KWLS is now missing from over here that used to be here. Um, a lot of times if you go ahead and save your work, um, egg clock, click out of it, mm. click back into it, oh. yep. it is working to pull it back up. Not sure why commands a little slow today. But now that you've gone back into it, now you can see images and KWLS has reappeared. I have reported it to labs. They are working on it. Uh, but right now they are a little bit confused on <laughs> why it, it, it's doing that. <laughs> uh, but it looks like it didn't save. There we go. So here, and what I had to do is because when it pulled up, it seemed to not save my image the way that I wanted it with all of the in, uh, updated information. So I came over here to this uh, circular kind of clock and I looked at previous versions. So I had saved it right before I closed, which was about a minute ago. So I just clicked on this use and that brought all of my information back in to my image. Um, so to answer your question, Ashley, if you wanted to change this to a different image, uh, you could come up here under images 
and under company. The company has uh, provided a number of different stock photos. So if you wanted to change this out with something different. Um, okay, or we can just like download another Google aerial shot or whatnot. Yeah, you, you, you okay. could download your own, uh, whatever you, you wanted to do. Uh, but it's the same process is you want to click on the image, make sure your dotted lines are around your image with the little circles on the corners, and then click over whatever image uh, you wanted to put in there, and the image would change. If you don't like that image, simply come up here to the half circle and undo it. Okay. Cool. Okay. I'm going to try saving that again because it keeps reverting back to a different file. All right, so now it hit saved and it, it come, came up there and told me that it was saved. Uh, so now this is as difficult, simple, and complex as what creating a social campaign image is. Uh, it can be three different steps. It could be 12 different steps. You can add and replace whatever you're wanting to in the images. Um, you, you can uh, make this as much your own as you want. If you don't like the text down here, you can come uh, click on it. Make sure again uh, that you're working within this box. And you can come up here and you can change the text format. So maybe we want a different text. We want something a little bit more standard. Maybe you don't want it as big. Uh, that might be a little too small. But maybe you, you don't want the wording popping out at somebody. You want the images popping out at somebody. If you want your logo just a little bit bigger. You can move that logo and make sure that it's bigger. If you're wanting to move this to match that. You're just literally moving things around as you would on a Microsoft publisher or a PowerPoint, um, any type of design program. So again, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Make sure that it's saved. And I can download this image uh, if I want to. Um, however, I'm going to keep it right here and I'm going to close to uh, complete it. The next one I want to show you is print designs. So it's the same process, uh, but different result. So you're going to come down here into the blue circle. You're going to click on that. And this time you're going to create a uh, print design. <coughs> I apologize, guys. Sure. We're going to click on print. And we're going to choose that one to next. Uh, I hear somebody's blinker. I hope you're you're being safe if you're driving. I don't know why command is being so slow today, guys. Sorry, it's saying that it's working. So while this is pulling up, um, something's come up in a number of different classes over this week. Um, a lot of people are asking, how do I uh, show that the market is still healthy? Um, I've got clients that are concerned about 
um, whether to list their house or to go ahead and move forward with buying. Um, and this will, let me refresh, that will work. Um, there is a area in here that you can actually create uh, kind of what's happening in your area. It will tell them kind of marketing, how many listings, how many uh, active contracts, how many solds. And I do not know what's going on with command. Uh, but while that's working, um, I'm going to show you all where to get that information. So on MLS, uh, if you come into your uh, dashboard on MLS, right here on your market watch area will give you all of the stats that you need. So right now I have this defaulted to all residential on a seven day period. And you can see in the last seven days in all of uh, the North Texas real estate system, there's been a little over 2,200 new listings. If I take that down to today, there was 215 new listings put into MLS today in North Texas. Now this is not just the Dallas Fort, uh, Fort Worth area, this is all of uh, North Texas that subscribes to this MLS. Um, so if you are looking at maybe a specific area, you'll want to come down here to customize. This is a little deceiving uh, when you're putting it out there unless you are disclosing that it is a North Texas area, not the DFW market. Um, so you can come and customize this. And the best way I have found to customize this is by county. Um, Everybody's really looking at counties right now, Dallas County, Denton County, um, where you live, where you work. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick Denton County. And I'm gonna click, come down here and hit save. That's gonna come back out here and it's gonna customize this market watch. And in Denton County, there is 24 new listings today. There was 12 properties closed. And if you add all of the kick out, active kickout, active option contract, active contingent, and pending, this is how many uh, contracts were put into place today. If you wanted that number to be a little bit bigger, you could go to seven days. And now we're looking at, in the last week, 300 new listings in Denton County, 296 closed, and then you can, again, add up your active kickout, active option, active contingent, and pending for new contracts that were signed in the last seven days. So that is really good information, whether you're marketing it out on social media, whether you're sending an e-blast about it, uh, whether you're having a phone call about it. It's great information. So just wanted to share that with y'all. And good, now um, our print has come back. So in the print, um, under new listings, let's see, neighborhood snaps, there's a number of those. Don't see one of those that uh, you can do in print, uh, but you can always make one uh, out of a different template. But for today, again, we'll just stick with neighborhood snaps. And maybe we wanna do a door hanger and print out a door hanger, or maybe a standard postcard. that You just wanna walk around your neighborhood, get some exercise and start putting uh, information on people's inf uh, doors to give you a call. So uh, again, let's, let's go ahead and do a door hanger. Um, so we're gonna do a white, this white door hanger, cause I don't wanna use too much black 
ink and printing it out because it is a print job. So this is a two-sided door hanger. So here's your front, uh, front side. If you click next, it'll tell you what uh, the vectors, it'll show you your uh, back side. Let's do the front first. And if this is too small uh, for you to work with, there is a percentage zoom up here or down here in the uh, right hand corner. You can increase that maybe 150%. It's a little easier for, for me to work with. So I'm gonna start here at the top. I'm gonna highlight this area and I'm gonna double click into it. Highlight Barton Hills. And I'm going to put current. Your market's on the move. We'll leave that. Um, this image, uh, maybe we want to change that image and I'm going to come and change it with a stock photo. Maybe find one real quick. Really cool. So I like the bike riding image. Maybe I want to move that over just a little bit. And then again, oh, and there goes my KWLS. Okay. There we go. I clicked on it. I didn't have to go out that time. So, so I clicked on it and it reappeared over here. So again, I'm going to come over to my snapshots. I'm going to go down to postal code. You know what? Maybe this time I don't want to do postal code. Maybe this time I actually want to do a actual neighborhood. Since I'm going to be leaving them on porches. And I'm going to So that's going to be Oakmont uh, CC Estates. Now I have my front of my door hanger. I'm going to go to the next page. Zoom in because that. Um, I'm going to click into here so I can change the wording. Uh, and I'm, I, I'm definitely going to come back in here and make sure that uh, the percentages and the information is all correct. I'm going to want to change my image, make sure again, and my images left me. This is going to be a little bit difficult, more difficult than I, what I wanted to do today, given that it is not working with me. And command is being extremely slow. You want to make sure that all of your information it's updated, it's centered, it's looking good. And then before you print, I want to show you one other thing. And 
going to save this right quick. And I'm going to come over to my front image and I'm going to file and I'm going to come down here to manage bleed. I'm going to make sure that the that is on and the bleed size, however much I want to chop, uh, put a border around that so that your images are not uh, cutting off your page. I guess this is not a good day to be working in command. Looks like my screen has completely frozen. All right, let's get out of there. Sorry, guys. Sometimes that happens with command. Go back in designs. Our image. And it does look like it saved my information. Um, so now I want to make sure to come up here on the file. And I also want to check print quality. So you want to make sure that you're checking print quality uh, before you download something to print it. Uh, you want to make sure that there's green check marks on any of the images that you've uh, brought in. If I was to change that out. I want to make sure I'm checking print quality on the back. You want to make sure that everything has a green check mark on it before you download um, so that it's not blurry when you go to actually print it. So now that I've checked my print quality, I'm going to save it one last time. And I'm going to come to this down arrow that says download. I'm going to click on the download. I'm going to click, uh, probably download it in either a JPEG, PNG, or PDF, depending on uh, how you want to download it. If you're printing it out yourself, uh, it does not matter. If you're taking it to a Kinko's or a FedEx or something like that to be professionally printed um, and or sending it off to a printing company to have it printed on actual like door hangers, um, you, you need to make sure that you're checking with the company what kind of image uh, quality and uh, publishing settings that they need. So I'm just going to do it in a quick PDF. Um, I want to do it for my current design. I want high resolution print quality and I want to start the download. And it's going to download the, uh, this into my download file. So is coming right now. Now you can see here's my PDF front and that should be coming. And you can print this maybe out on a flyer um, instead of a door hanger for right now. Um, if you can't get it to an actual professional printer. And that. Uh, the next one I wanted to show you uh, really quick was videos. Um, it's again the same thing um, as both social and print, but you're going to click on here, come to video, and you can make a video for your neighborhood and or your uh, City. This is where I live. And Corinth doesn't have any information, so then I'm going to have to go and find information on this. So maybe I want to. And 
and see what that. Here. Now I've got North Denton, I've got average home prices. I can click next. And that's going to create a video about the North Denton area. Once that uh, is finished, it may take, it says up to 10 seconds, the way that commands are running right now. Oh, there it is. Um, and then I can save that down. And now when I go to my videos, I have that North Denton video prepared. That's uh, the basics and walking through all of the different designs uh, that you can create for posting out. I'm going to ask if there's any questions before I go into command, uh, campaigns. And we use these designs to actually post out to our marketing uh, social media platforms. So anybody have any questions on how to design any type of media to go out and for branding? Oh, Samir, I can see you talking, but I think you have yourself muted. Yes, I am. Uh, okay. Thank you. Christy, uh, can we put them on Facebook or Instagram or any type of media, those videos that you just created? So I, I think I heard your question of, can you post these out on any type of social media? Correct. Yes, you can, but you need to make sure that your designs are created for the type of social platform that you're putting them on. So when you're going into uh, social media and, uh, you're choosing which type of social media you want or when you're creating the ad that you want. So maybe it's listings, it's maybe for a sale. Yeah, I so saw. Make sure you're coming up here and choosing the correct size. I know this is the same size for the for the picture, but I'm talking about the video. Uh, for the video, I believe that is only out on Facebook. No, you can put a video anywhere. Yes. Yes, okay. the videos can go anywhere. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so I am going to go on to campaigns. And we're going to go through a couple of the different campaigns. So the first one I'm going to do is the most basic. It's the social posts. Um, so like I had said earlier, um, down in the chat box, I had put a couple Easter images uh, for y'all to use if you so desire. Um, we can use one of those right now in creating a social post. Social posts are not lead generation. These are uh, posts out to your business page. Um, so as you come in here to the social posts, you can actually uh, see uh, in a one week view of all the posts that you uh, have created. You can go forward a week, you can go back a week, or you can come over here to the right hand side and choose a month view. So as you can see for April, um, I've only done the first couple weeks, but I have consistent posting on my social media business page every single day. Some, uh, some is business, some are personal. Um, I try to keep a pretty even balance um, on my business page, uh, about 60% business, 40% personal. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're doing some posts that get some engagement um, as well. So um, you can see what I've got planned out. I usually do my planning on Monday for the week. So every Monday I come in and I plan out the next week of postings that I want to post out. And then as I find things during the week, especially right now in the changing environment we're in, um, I can do additional really quick posts um, as the time comes or as I uh, need to, but at least the engagement's already set there on my uh, business page for the week. So 
to create a, a post. You're going to come in here to uh, create a new campaign. This is going to be a standard social post. Uh, we're not actually doing the paid posts yet. So we're just going to choose a social post. And you can start from uh, the top. Oh, your and So I've got a, a little text here. This is your preview on this side where it says exactly what I typed. I'm going to choose to upload a photo and I can add that from designs. I can, or I can upload an image that I, I so choose. You can upload a video, which is a neighborhood video, a video from your computer or a video URL or you can add a link uh, that is a public link. Uh, if you make this private, it will not work. Uh, you have to have a public link and making it public through like a Google uh, Drive or a, another similar platform. So we're gonna make this very basic and simple. We're gonna choose um, an, to upload a photo. We're gonna upload an image from the com uh, computer. We're gonna use one of those Easter photos. So here are the five Easter photos that I've shared um, in the chat bar. I, let's see, I kind of think bunny ears look cute. Just choose that one. This uh, will ask you how you want to show it. Do you want to show a wide photo or do you want to share a square? I believe that the wide looks... Uh, Well, maybe that's not the best one because it's going to cut it off a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll work with it. So, image. Now, uh, you do have to place your DBA logo somewhere on the image. Um, mine defaults to the right, but if you do have a photo here that has some wording or something down here, and you need to move it to the left, you can do that as well. And you can include the ownership statement if you so uh, choose below it. Then you can choose when you would like it to post. Um, if you want to uh, post this immediately, you can click publish immediately, or if you want to schedule it out because it's not quite Easter yet, um, I can publish this at any time I choose. So I'm going to uh, post it on uh, the 12th, and I'm going to want to post this at 8 a.m. in the morning. I'm gonna, uh, click uh, outside that calendar. Now it's going to publish April 12th at 8 a.m. I want to publish it to my Facebook page and my uh, Twitter page. And now, as you saw over here, my preview post now has a drop down menu between what it will look like on Facebook and what it will look like on Twitter. And then I'm going to come up here and schedule that post. So it's scheduled both the Facebook and the Twitter post. And now if I go to Sunday, April 12th, It'll show that I am, I'm actually posting one at 8 a.m. to Facebook and Twitter and 9 a.m. Facebook and Twitter because I already had one pre uh, filled for there. But if I wanted to come down and see a preview, these are the two previews that are scheduled. Here's my Happy Easter. And then this is the one that I had originally uh, ske scheduled out. So you can come and see. This is the one that I had originally done uh, for Easter morning. So maybe I uh, don't want them going out that soon. 
uh, maybe I'd want to change this one to maybe later that afternoon. So I come down to the post. These three dots on the right-hand side, if I click on them, they will give me the option to edit the post or delete the post. You can edit this post, yes. And I'm gonna come down here and change the time that I want this out. And Maybe now I want it to go out at three o'clock in the afternoon. And schedule that post. And you can come down here and now uh, see that this one's going to go out at 3 p.m. This one's going to continue going out at 9 a.m. All right. Uh, going on to paid advertisements. So paid advertisements is a great lead generation uh, tool. I have been using it uh, for a few months now. Um, had some great success. Um, had some that weren't so great. Um, right now, I have an active campaign going. Um, it's uh, on day two of the campaign. I've had uh, 301 impressions, 11 clicks, and three leads in two days. And I've got uh, three days left on this campaign. But right now, I'm paying $2.21 uh, for each of the, these leads. Uh, they actually have just come in today, so I can't tell you if they're going to be successful leads or not. Uh, but if I click on the leads, you can see right here, they've provided their name, their phone number, and their email address to me. So I do have uh, both two different uh, ways of following up. Uh, so we'll see how that campaign uh, ends in a few days. Hopefully I'll, I'll have much more uh, success stories to share with all of y'all later on uh, converting some of these leads uh, into actual clients. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and create a uh, new campaign today. So we're going to come up here again, create a new campaign, and we're going to create a social ad campaign. So you can create campaigns for any number of different things. Uh, you can advertise a listing. You can try to attract listings. You can brand awareness, whether that be a KW brand, your personal uh, business brand. You can attract buyers. Advertise multiple listings, attract talent if you are uh, part of a team and looking to add to your team, uh, and event awareness. Uh, we do a lot of philanthropy at uh, KW, like the Red Day that's coming up, if you wanted to do some kind of an event awareness around that um, and or other. Um, you, the first thing you want to do is have an idea of what your campaign is going to be, your concept for your campaign because um, you want to name your campaign. If you're going to do advertise a listing, maybe you uh, want to name your campaign the prop uh, property address of that listing. Um, I'm going to actually try to attract listings today, um, and I'm going to do it through a Keller offer. Uh, And then I want to do this on Facebook and Instagram. So I'm going to see which uh, one is more productive. Oh, and you know what? I don't have my Instagram set up right now. Oh, maybe I'm not. Okay. So I'm going to just do it on Facebook. So this is very similar to your actual uh, social media campaigns that go out on your business page. Um, however, these are paid campaigns that will actually target people outside your Facebook page and outside your database. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of run through each of these areas. So the first thing you want to do if you are uh, wanting a listing is this first section, uh, you want to add a listing. So if you are uh, trying to advertise, you can click on add a listing here. You can search the listings by property address, MLS number, or listing agent. If you are trying to list or advertise a property that is outside your listings, um, so say it is a, a 
agent's uh, listing or maybe you're on a team, you want to make sure you come over to only my listings and change this to all listings. So this will pull up all listings within K KWLS. Uh, then you'll want to narrow it by maybe listing agent or uh, property address. So we're not going to be doing that today. Um, what I am going to be doing is coming in and typing in the text. Um, but I always like starting with the media. I don't know why. It just uh, makes works better with my brain uh, to get the media in here first and then the words come second. Um, so I can actually add media in a di couple different ways. So again, I can add an uh, image or I can add a video. So if I wanted to come in and add an image, select image, I can choose an image from a listing. I can add an Im image from my uh, computer or I can add a video. Uh, if I wanted to choose a design that we created in design, so maybe I go back to uh, browse design library and here is the current snapshot that we uh, had created before. I can bring in that design. And preview and crop. I can make it square, vertical, full portrait, or again wide that looks the best. I can share that image. And now uh, you have an image over here. You can add more than one image. So if you wanted to come over and add an additional image, you wanted to add another Easter egg, save and crop it. And now you're gonna have a rotation of images that come around on the uh, add. If you want to discard any of these images, you hover over the image. There will be three dots that pop up here and you can delete the images. I actually want to upload an image from my computer. Okay, um, with this image, then I can go back up to my text and I can keep things as simple as possible as far as wording. And I'm going to save that text. So now you can see I've, I've kept it very brief, very quick, uh, very to the point. Your Facebook ad, you'll uh, when you come to this area, is going to be your channel options. You're going to uh, open your business page is where you want to put this out on. Now the second part is destination. You can use a Facebook lead generation form or you can use a site or landing page. The best practice is to use a Facebook lead generation form. You will get better leads from Facebook ads by using this uh, method. 
simply due to the fact when they come to click this button to learn more, <coughs> Facebook will automatically populate their, their name, their phone number, and their email address into the box. They click submit and it moves them to the next step. They do not have to enter any information. And most people, when they uh, things auto populate and they can click quickly, they will go ahead and share your information with you. If you do use a site or landing page, this will be something that you would have to uh, redirect them to, to your agent's site, uh, contact page, and or a specific landing page. They would have to fill in their information and share that information with you. And data has actually shown that it is less likely that somebody will take the time to type in their personal information on a uh, contact form than it being auto-populated. So if you are looking at really trying to use this for lead generation, I would use the Facebook lead generation form. Make sure that uh, you can change this. So uh, maybe if you're doing a first time home buyer seminar or something like that, you would wanna do an, a sign up. Um, if you're doing maybe a Keller mortgage, maybe you're doing an apply now, but most uh, nine times out of 10, you will be doing a learn more. After you uh, have them fill out the Facebook lead generation form, the follow-up destination can be your site or your landing page. Um, so if you wanted to come in here, you could come in and choose a site. It would actually auto-populate whether you wanted them to go to your homepage, whether they wanted to go down my app, uh, which is a landing page or a page that I have on my agent's site. Um, I could actually send them directly to the contact page on my site or a number of different other places. Um, feature listings, this could be a landing page with the same information and maybe a little bit more about the actual listing that you're promoting. And you could send them to this page with all of the MLS data on a landing page after they shared their interest and their uh, name with you. The other thing you can do is uh, a link out to a uh, Google Doc. So if I wanted to come in here, copy a URL destination. This is actually a, a, a Google form that I have created so that when uh, somebody is interested in uh, what, what their home is worth, they give me their uh, name, phone number, and email address in this lead generation form. Then it sends them to a Google, doc, uh, Google form that asks them for additional information. Uh, what year their house was born, uh, built, uh, if they, when they need to move, if they're in an HOA. Uh, these are qualifying questions uh, for an actual Keller offer. Um, uh, it will actually give me more information and able to uh, contact them back and be able to have a meaningful conversation with them. Um, on your tag target audience, uh, you. Uh, I do recommend using custom settings, uh, which can get a little bit more targeted on uh, where you want your advertisement to go. So you have, uh, you open up the custom settings. This will give you uh, the option of targeting your database, which is very narrow, um, or you can customize an audience. So maybe I want to do this one in Dal around Dallas, Texas. I do a, a 20 mile radius. You can do larger radiuses, uh, but uh, or smaller. I do believe 15 miles is the minimum radius that Facebook will allow you uh, to do on a post. Uh, this is due to the fact of fair housing laws. Uh, they do not want you to nar narrow your search so much that it can be construed as potential uh, a fair housing. Uh, they do not want any type of targeting neighborhoods or targeting specific uh, small demographic areas. So 15 miles is the smallest you can do. I usually do anywhere from 20 to 25 miles. Um, 
So in an area like Dallas, uh, maybe I would go uh, 20 miles. The next thing is you can do expert targeting and you can target interests. So interests, um, again, they have taken a lot of the narrow searches out of here. But if I'm looking for people that are selling their houses, uh, maybe I type in house. And maybe I'm looking at people that are house hunting um, or just the word house. Maybe I also want to look at finance. And maybe um, looking at somebody that's doing um, personal finance or maybe looking at their credit scores. Um, those can be at other areas that you would want to monitor. Um, investments. So maybe I'm looking at people that are wanting investment properties or wanting to um, look at real estate inve uh, investment uh, trusts. Uh, maybe return on investment. So you can target a number of different uh, areas in, in this. Um, if you do use this, I would make sure that you are um, giving yourself a wide enough uh, target interest um, other than just a general targeting. Right here, you've got an estimated audience somewhere in the uh, 2 million range. This would be Maybe it's a smaller uh, demographic that I would like. And for time's sake today, I'm going to go ahead and delete those and just do a very broad general uh, advertisement without any specific interests. So I'm going to see that. Required field. Not liking my URL. Okay. So you have HTTPS twice. Okay, now it likes that. Thank you. So um, now I can go down to the duration and budget of my advertisement. You cannot start an ad same day. So it will always start the following day, which gives Facebook 24 hours on most uh, circumstances. Now, if you do start it at 11 p.m. at night, I do believe it still starts the next day. Um, but I think that's more of a gamble on whether Facebook has time to review your ad or not. Um, but today is the ninth. I would want my ad starting the following day. You can run it how many ever days you, uh, you see, see fit. So if I ran this one through this weekend, all of next week and the following week, maybe I stop it on uh, Sunday night which is nine days. Um, if I did a $30 budget, that would be $3 per day. I could up this in increments until maybe $4 per day, total of $36 uh, for the advertisement over nine days. Uh, you can also uh, increase your budget and short, uh, or keep your budget the same and shorten it. The, Difference between those is how long your ad is going to run for that day. So if you have a $4 uh, per day or per channel budget, it may run longer uh, because your ad will run as long as that $4 pay per click. And that's why they're called PPC campaigns. Um, so every time your ad is clicked on that there is actual money being deducted from that per daily uh, allotment. If it runs really quick and a lot of people click on it, then it will stop running for that day and it will wait until the following day to start running it again. So maybe I don't want it to run for nine days at $4 a uh, day. 
but maybe I want it to run three days at $12 per day. This is all up to you. Um, there is no magic formula, guys. There is nothing that says the shorter duration, the higher than per day, the longer duration, the uh, smaller. It, it is trial and error. It, it is trying to find a niche of content area that you are advertising in. That's your city. That's uh, the people with interests. It is the duration of your advertisement and how much you're spending on it. Um, some people are getting a handful, uh, three, four, five leads per ad, and some people are getting 45 leads per ad. Um, it's just trying to find a niche and a content um, that you're finding the type uh, of targeted leads that you need for your business. Um, so I don't think, for me, I wouldn't put $12 a day on a budget. Um, that, to me, in my experience, just seems a little high for what I'm doing. So maybe I run mine um, an extra day. Maybe run it for four days. But maybe I take my budget down and I'm running it maybe six fifty a day. So we'll try that in the Dallas market over the weekend. And now this is uh, what my ad is going to look like. No obligation cash offer. Need to move. That's what it's going to look like on web. On mobile, it's going to say the same thing. No obligation cash offer. It'll have the color... Uh, Keller Offers logo, need to move. Now I can either save this as a draft to come back and publish later, or I can move on and uh, publish it as a campaign. Uh, I do need one thing. I don't want it to look as if I am actually doing the ca cash offers. It is kept through Keller, uh, Keller offered. So even though there is a logo here, I wanted to make sure to be specifically clear in publishing this one. And let's go ahead and publish it. So you do have to have a credit card uh, attached to your campaign. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and choose this Visa card. I am going to create this campaign. And now when it stops fitting, it will actually take me back to the home page to where it will say under review. Get there. So now um, I can see it is pending review, excuse me, not under review, but pending review. Uh, it will start tomorrow. I do have um, some drafts in here already uh, ready to go out. I have one that's active right now. Um, and then I did have one that was disapproved. Uh, this does happen from time to time with Facebook. Uh, this one, if it is uh, disapproved, it will tell you in the, the writing why it was disapproved. You may or may not agree with the re reasons that it was disapproved, but it was disapproved and you do have to try to play by Facebook rules. Um, I will tell you this uh, one was disapproved, uh, the reason being that it made false or misleading or deceptive claims, uh, which it clearly did not. Uh, but in talking to other agents and um, some of the tech drivers in uh, our North Texas, New Mexico, uh, Memphis area, Facebook is recently started to uh, disapprove any ads that are too wordy. Um, if the images are, uh, have a lot of wording with it, uh, they are, uh, disapproving them for this reason, um, because they are not reading the wording. They're just, uh, 
going ahead and disapproving them, saying that uh, there's too much words, it must make some type of uh, false claims. Agree with it, don't agree with it. Um, it is what it is. There is not any fighting with it. Um, so on this one that was disapproved, I can come over here to the three dots. I can uh, duplicate the campaign and it will ask me to duplicate and run it. I do not want to do that because it will run the exact duplicated ad or I can do du duplicate and customize. So I can customize this. It will bring it up. And I, as you can see right here, all it says is how to react to a changing market, which is not deceptive uh, in my mind, but it could be uh, Facebook. I also had a lot of wording here and a lot of wording down here. Um, so in, if I did want to try this ad again, um, I could come in here to my media and try a different image and uh, delete that image, maybe start a different image and maybe is something like this that has a little less wording on it. Um, if you can kind of see down here, uh, the logo that's on the right hand side, I could also move this over to the left so that it is not covering up the Keller offers that are over here. Um, I could also come in here and I could uh, change the text message. Um, so if I, I didn't want this to be as uh, wordy, or maybe I'd, I wanted to keep and see if it would run like this. Um, you can change change it up however you see fit. Um, it will make me change the duration and the budget. Save that. Figure it will let it still go out. My target market. Say I just wanted to see this draft for later. So I can come in and kind of manipulate this one and send it back out uh, for another lead generation activity. The last thing that I wanted to show you all today is um, smart. Now, smart plans are normally thought of as drip campaigns, um, but it is a workaround right now for email blocks. Um, so right now, when you're looking at campaigns and you want to come over here to emails, um, you can come in here and you can create a uh, campaign, add an email, um, but all of this is going through uh, uh, Monkey, come on, help me guys, Monkey Net, Monkey Jet, whatever that, uh, the chimp? The... MailChimp, thank you, I was thinking yeah. it was a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, two o'clock uh, on a Thursday, my brain's going cl closed. So Mailchimp, um, Mailchimp yeah. they are. Uh, we are trying to uh, redirect this through command email, um, but it is not there yet. Um, it is a little bit cumbersome in doing uh, email blast campaigns uh, through Mailchimp uh, because the free account only allows you to do uh, one group at a time in email blasts. Uh, so we have kind of uh, found ways around doing uh, email blasts through smart, camp, uh, smart plans. So I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna show you how you can do an email blast on a smart campaign. So first you, would, uh, you need to start in your library and you need to download an editable uh, campaign. Um, Let's think your midterm year. Yeah, this will be good. So I'm just going to do the midterm nurture. Um, it has only two touches, so there's not, and six steps, so there's not a lot uh, to it to uh, edit it. So I'm going to click on Add Smart Plan. I'm going to change the name of this smart plan to Email Blast. COVID-19 and apply. So I'm going to come over to my smart plans. 
I'm going to go to that smart plan and I'm going to come all the way over to the right hand side under the pencil in editing. And then I am going to edit the smart plan by these icons um, or widgets to the right. So what I want to add is send an email. It is going to add it to the very bottom of my uh, campaign. So you can see that right here. But in uh, to begin with, I want to delete all the other steps. So I want to get rid of all these make a phone calls, delays, text messages. I want to get rid of all of these other uh, steps until only step left is number one, send an email. So I can send a simple email, which is just like sending an email through Google Mail or Outlook or whatever uh, email uh, provider that you have. Uh, I can have it uh, come from me. I can type in a subject and I can type in a standard email. The other thing you can do is type in an HTML. So if you switch over to HTML, it will still come from you. It, your subject, uh, it helpful information about COVID-19. And I'm going to browse the library for an email template. So in here, you can come back uh, back up here and any of the email templates that you've created in designs, uh, you can uh, download to an email blast. Um, they work just the same way as uh, any of the social media, the print uh, or videos that we just uh, went through, uh, but you will create the email in here in, instead. You will upload the email template um, and then uh, save that plan. If you want it to go out all at once, you can click on this uh, add person and you can uh, search by name or you can search by tags. So if I wanted this to go out to everyone in my A and W tag, it would start loading my contacts. That way. So now anybody with the last name W or for last name A, it will bring them down and I can select all. 55 and uh, I apologize if y'all can't see that there we go I can move this and then back down here we'll say add to smart plan so it will add all of those people to a smart plan when you click save with those people on this uh, smart plan it will automatically send that email out to everyone that you just added If you want to add more people to this uh, smart plan, maybe at a later date, uh, so you sent this out to all of your A's and W's, you've made your phone calls for that uh, week, that day, that week, maybe you're doing the DTD2, uh, you're calling your next group the next week, you wanna send out the same email to them, come over here to add contacts. Again, uh, Choose by your contacts. Now you can do your B and E groups. Um, and it's not going to come up uh, because I don't have the, those added yet. But you see, uh, see what I'm saying is adding the next group, add those to the smart plan. As soon as uh, you cl click on those, those will go out. You can say send the same email content to different people. Um, if you wanted to do a different email blast, maybe to your entire database, um, you can do that. Um, you will have to add them at 50 contacts per, uh, per time. So 
Uh, right now, actually at this one, it's only 20 contacts. Um, so that would take a long time to add for 506 contacts in my data. Um, I would mainly uh, add tags, which is a little bit quicker. Um, but you can uh, keep adding uh, 20 at a time until a blast goes out. It is a little time consuming right now, guys, but it is a uh, workaround to getting an email blast out to uh, your database if you want to. Um, it is probably the best way to get it out right now where the email is coming from your email address. The response to that email will come back to your email address um, and your clients will get the information that you need. Um, I will be sending out uh, updates as this changes and as uh, the effectiveness of the email campaigns actually changes and uh, Labs creates uh, a link uh, for that to work the way that it was intended, uh, we will send it out to everybody uh, that it is working. But, uh, those are pretty much the main uh, ways to market in campaigns uh, or through camp uh, command. I hope it, it's been really uh, it, fun for you. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, I, I've been doing a lot of this uh, myself in the last few days and reaching out to my database and emailing my database and uh, lead generating and trying to create campaigns, really uh, increasing the engagement on my Facebook uh, business page and, and letting my, my clients know that they're, they're not out there alone. Um, they, they do have a lifeline if they are wondering about real estate information to reach out. And I, I highly recommend y'all do the same thing. Uh, start playing around in here. Start reaching out to your clients, uh, reaching out uh, to the Facebook community. Uh, there are a lot of people that don't know any other uh, realtors. And if they see your ad, uh, they may click on it wanting information from you. So make sure your content is something you're knowledgeable about not knowledgeable about. Uh, make sure that you can answer questions around it. And if you need help from any other agents, reach out to the Market Center. Uh, not only the Leadership Committee and the ALC, but there's a lot of agents uh, on the uh, blue list out there that will be able to answer and help be happy to help anybody with any questions. So, oh, great. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, can't stop the recording now. And I uh, hope everyone has a great uh, Easter weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have any questions or anything? No. Okay. Well, I hope I hope this helped y'all. Um, I hope y'all have fun designing things. Um, if you have any question, y'all have my uh, uh, phone number. Text me. Email me. I'll be more than happy to share anything. Uh, if you need any content, let me know. I've got a ton of content, a uh, ton of images. If you come up with something and just need some help uh, with filling in wording or content, let me know, and I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you. All right, great. Thank you. All right. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, Christy. Thank happy you. Happy Easter.